Hello, thank you for joining us today. My name is Charlie Schwedler. I'm the Executive Director of Senior Services of Midland County, also known as the Midland County Council on Aging. Uh, we are here today to just kind of enlighten you a little bit about the services that we've had and the fact that we've gone nowhere and have really done uh, an incredible amount of work during the pandemic and the flood and those kinds of things. But sometimes I think what happens is that folks don't really know all the different things that we do. And so what we're talking about today is how uh, older adults can embrace their age. With me today is Trina Winans, who is the Director of Education and Community Outreach, Travis Schreiber, who is the uh, Food Services Manager, uh, we have Julie uh, Randolph, who is the Lead uh, Care Coordinator, and Deb Connerty, who is the Director of Adult Day Services and Transportation. And each of them are going to talk about some of the services that we have in, uh, at Senior Services. And uh, obviously, they're going to talk about how we interconnect and all the different things that we do together. We're going to start with uh, Trina. And so Trina, talk to us about, um, uh, you know, I guess, uh, the more active areas of, of Senior Services. Yes, absolutely. So I think that sometimes, um, when people think of a place like senior services, they're really thinking of, of people who are maybe frail or maybe they are um, homebound, and we serve those folks. But we also serve folks right from the beginning of what I sometimes call our third act, right? They, they've maybe just retired, they are just maybe relatively newly um, empty nesters, and they're looking for things to do places to meet people. Maybe they're tired of cooking and they'd like to come somewhere and have a great meal that they don't have to prepare. And they are looking to get some exercise. They want to maybe learn some new things, take some classes. And we're here for all of that. So it's um, in that kind of uh, earlier maybe phase of that third act, we are providing so many kinds of activities, programs, great things for people to do, ways to connect, and all of that serves to make their brain, their body um, as healthy as possible because we really want people to be able to age successfully, um, hopefully in their home, yeah. independently. Fantastic, so give me some examples of what, what we do. What are some of the things that you're talking about? Sure, absolutely, well there's so many things. Um, you know, really all of our centers, and we have five centers all around the county, so lots of opportunities no matter where you live. Um, but we have things like, my part of that is especially fitness classes, including Tai Chi, yoga, Zumba, um, something called Walk 15, um, Pilates, we've got all kinds of great programs that way, um, to then educational programs where people can come and learn about the Civil War. They can come and hear guest speakers. They can listen to TED Talks and then have a moderated discussion. Again, things to keep them thinking um, and engaging in life and with other people. And beyond all of that, we have evidence-based programs that really dive more deeply into maybe some issues that they might be struggling with. Maybe they're trying to figure out how to manage their diabetes. Um, so we have a diabetes self-management program. Maybe they're trying to learn how to manage their chronic pain, if that's developed. And we have this great chronic pain series. And then we also help people with balance. We have um, classes just for balance. And we also uh, do a lot of programming for caregivers. So a lot of times people will find that maybe their spouse, maybe a parent, maybe a sibling, is having some more significant health changes and they're needing to step in and really figure out how to help. It's not just intuitive, it's not something you just know what to do. So these classes really help people, among other things, know they're not alone. Uh, so we also have support groups um, for Parkinson's disease, um, focused on dementia care. Especially with dementia care, there is so much to learn. And, and then we, also are then able to link them up with this whole variety of other services that just helps make their life easier and better. So uh, no matter where you are on that journey, we're there for you. Uh, my part is more that earlier part, mostly, but we're also, like I say, really helping those caregivers as well. 
Right. So uh, talk to me about some of the educational programs. Uh, we do some really neat things that way. And by the way, when we talk about all of these programs, we really did a, um, a kind of a pivot. Uh, we were doing, and still do, quite a bit online with Zoom and those kinds of things, uh, both the exercise classes and the educational classes. But we really have some really neat things that we do at lunchtime and those kinds of things. So share with us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Twice a month, we usually have a guest speaker and that can be on a whole variety of topics. We call that lunchtime learners, where we'll bring in speakers on, oh gosh, we've had, um, again, we've had history topics, we've had nature topics, things to do in your yard, all the way to what are the diversity, equity and inclusion efforts going on in the local community. Uh, just a, a real opportunity to engage with um, interesting speakers. Um, we'll have a talk on uh, the Titanic coming up this year, which should be very popular, the Dion Quintuplet. Um, TED Talks happen during lunch. And what I love about a lot of these programs, we really try to do them during lunch because my friend Travis over here serves an amazing lunch, which I love and I eat every day, by the way. Um, and it's, it's healthy, it's delicious, it's nutritious, and you can come have lunch engage your brain, engage with other people so you're getting that social connection uh, and get all of that in one fell swoop. I mean, what more can you ask for? Absolutely. And we'll talk more a, a little bit later with you in regard to volunteers when we, when we talk about all the different things that we have going on. But Travis, since she mentioned you, I guess you're on the, <laughs> that's, you're, me. you're, that's you. <laughs> um, so talk to us about, uh, you know, one of the things obviously that, that many folks maybe only think of uh, is that we do Meals on Wheels and, and, and those kinds of things. Um, but obviously there's more to it, but it's a really important part and it's a fantastic thing that we <coughs> do. So tell us about uh, all the food service programs that we do in, in the centers and those kinds of things. Talk to us about that a little bit. Sure. So starting with Meals on Wheels, um, you know, there's, we serve all of Midland County. Uh, there's 20 routes that go out for Meals on Wheels. Uh, it's delivered by over 160 volunteers um, throughout the year. Uh, to date, I think we've served 152,000 meals. So that's total, including all the services we provide. So, um, so that's a pretty big number. Uh, getting ready for the uh, two holiday meals coming up, Thanksgiving and Christmas. So those will both be in the next, well, the first one will be in the next couple weeks, and then the Christmas one will be at the beginning of December. So we're starting to plan for that as well. So. I'm going to um, interrupt you a second because I want to talk about that a little bit because it talks about what we did do during the pandemic and how this is going to connect. So one of the things that we did during the pandemic was we switched to uh, the early part. It's, I, I say that like we're out of the woods. We know we're not out of the woods yet. Um, I'm not suggesting that at all. Uh, but we did what we call curbside meals. We never stopped serving people. We never stopped with Meals on Wheels delivery. And, and for uh, um, our center meals, we did what was called curbside. Well, because of the extreme volume that we have for the Thanksgiving meal and the um, Christmas meal, we're doing curbside. So why don't you talk about how those are gonna be served and uh, what's so special about those two meals? Sure, so Thanksgiving will be uh, drive-through, as you said. Uh, so it'll be served, um, there'll be certain times that you can sign up for, uh, so it'll be from 11 a.m. until 1, 1 o'clock. So we'll have different time slots, 15 minute increments. Uh, so you can come in and um, we'll have the meals ready for you at the beginning. Uh, there'll be a line that you drive through. Uh, there'll be a couple of different stations that you'll stop at um, and you'll pick up, you know, you'll have your main meal and your, your cold stuff to go with it. You know, whatever's going with it for that day. Um, and then you'll, we'll have a couple of things set up at the end for you to look at and enjoy. Um, and then you can park in the parking lot and eat at the end, or you can take it home and eat, so. Yeah, in the Christmas uh, uh, event, we still partner with our great partner, the Community Foundation, the Midland uh, Area Community Foundation, where they have prizes and hams and all sorts of things, and it's set up pretty much the same way, yep. correct? Yep. yep, yep. So talk to us about uh, our centers. Uh, Trina had mentioned we have five different centers. Uh, talk to us about uh, what happens at those uh, not just with the meals, but also the other activities that happen during that time. Sure. So currently, 
three of the centers, the Sanford, the Coleman, and the Trailside centers, are operating kitchens. So the Greendale Center has a kitchen. Uh, it's not operational at the moment, uh, but we do still uh, take meals out to them for their dining room. Uh, and then the Mill Center in the um, Family Center, the North Midland Family Center, we take meals out to them for their congregate dining room as well. Uh, so all in all, the five centers have congregate dining uh, throughout the week. Sanford, Coleman, and Trailside do it every day. Uh, all three have a salad bar. They all have um, pretty good options on the salad bar. Uh, I just made chocolate pudding for the first time yesterday, so that was pretty exciting. That went over pretty well. So, uh, Did they love the meatloaf? Yes, meatloaf is number one, um, to the point where a couple of the cooks have gotten marriage proposals <laughs> over the meatloaf. So, <laughs> so it's a pretty important meal for them. So we actually put it on the menu a couple more times this uh, menu cycle for right, them. So. Right. And, and at the center, so not only can they eat, um, but we also have other activities that are at the centers. Yes. Uh, uh, for instance, what, what, what do we do during that time? So the center directors uh, at all five centers are very good with activities. Uh, a couple of the more popular ones, they do bingo. That was actually today, Wednesday, so a couple of uh, bingo days mixed in there. Um, other days with prizes, uh, they play a lot of card games. Um, you know, there's always puzzles set up everywhere. There's TVs. They do at Sanford. They do some wee bowling tournaments, mm -hmm. so that's a pretty popular one too. Some so pool and yeah, pool all sorts tournaments. Of so if you, if you go to those activity centers, you'll be amazed. So it's not just a meal. It's not just hey, come on in, have a meal. We're going to keep you engaged. We're going to keep you thinking and ha laughing. There's a ton of laughing going on. Probably if we let them. I'm not even going to go there, um, but I bet if we let them do that, they would. Uh, and and so they just have a have a riot there. It's a lot of fun, very welcoming. Our center directors are outstanding that way. And I, I'm sorry, yeah. I, if I can add in, yeah. I would just add that, you know, depending on your hobbies, so many of the centers have things that you can do to build on those hobbies, to learn from other people, um, and each center kind of has its own personality, which is cool. So. Uh, you know, you what? go to some of these, you, you, you go to Sanford, for example, you can do wood carving and you can learn from other wood carvers. It's incredible work. Um, you can learn to uh, crochet uh, at others. You can... Um, we have a writer's club. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a writer's group. They, they do kind of autobiographical stuff and, and some fictional. Um, just so many special interests, art classes, book clubs, you know, you can just go on and on. There's all this enrichment going on at these places. So they're just um, full of fun and interesting things to do and people to meet. You know, you go on social media and I see again and again places like Ask Midland. Where does somebody over 60 meet people? And every time I'm like, please come out <laughs> to senior services. Yeah. I know you're allergic to the word senior, but don't be because right. These people are amazing, and you're going to absolutely love it. You just have to give it a try. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's, it, I'm glad you mentioned the, uh, the, the senior word. You know, we <laughs> oftentimes um, talk about should we be called senior services or whatever, um, because one of the, the issues is people are kind of allergic to it. Uh, so we usually say older adults or whatever. In fact, I, I was uh, um, in K-12 education my entire life before this this career of, of being here and so people tell me you know what how do you like working with old people and I'm like I have no idea because I've never seen one and I'm telling you you don't see them it is it is just a wonderful wonderful group of people uh, we really encourage you to come out to our centers it goes on and on what you can do at our centers so that's kind of the active area Did, was there anything else you wanted to mention Travis we or? covered everything okay great um, and, you know, as time goes on, you know, one of the things, if you look at our website or if you look at our mission, I guess, is the biggest thing. Uh, you know, our mission is to keep older adults in their own home as long as it makes sense. Now, I, you know, kind of paraphrased our beautiful mission statement, and it's a wonderful mission statement, but that's the bottom line. What can we do to help you stay in your home? There are all sorts of things we can do. Engagement is one of them. You know, when you talk about loneliness, you know, uh, there's all sorts of studies out there about loneliness and about how the fact that it, uh, loneliness can be as devastating on a human being as smoking cigarettes and those kinds of things. So it's really important that we engage people, and that's why we talk about 
about the meals and the centers and the activities and those kinds of things. But there are other ways that we will help you stay uh, engaged and stay in your home. And we have this wonderful group of folks that work with our um, uh, more, more frail folks, not necessarily frail because you go in and out of frail, um, but I'm just there's more needs that happen. And that's our care coordinators and care managers. So Julie, could you tell us a little bit about you know, what care coordination does, what, what you do to help older adults uh, stay in their home? Well, we do. That is the primary focus is to foster independence and to enhance quality of life as it is at this moment. So some of our referrals come from uh, doctor's offices, um, rehab centers. Some of our services of care coordination are short term, just while someone's recovering from an illness or an injury, and others are long term. We have uh, clients that have stayed with us for a long time through many, many changes in their lives. Right. So uh, how does that work? Just kind of describe, you know, okay, a referral is made. Uh, how do you work with the family? How do you work with the older adult? Uh, we, um, we start out with just an intake of information. Um, we assign it to a care coordinator and they schedule a home visit. The home visit is a huge part of um, planning our services or finding out what they need. So uh, the care coordinator goes to the home and uh, finds out about uh, the family, what they value, what their history is, what their goals are. And um, we work with them through an assessment tool that provides um, really a, a way to identify ways that we can support them so they can stay in their home and so they can be safe. So we go through that process and then we write a care plan with them whatever they agree to, we certainly present all that we have. Um, our first priority is probably safety. So we can provide um, grab bars and uh, shower chairs and uh, smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. So just basic things that sometimes are overlooked by people. So, yeah. so we can And we can even help them with that, can't we? I mean, if they, if they need a grab bar put in or whatever, we, we, we have another um, uh, uh, program that's called Team Handyman mm -hmm. that will come in and, and do those kinds mm -hmm. of things, correct? It's an army of volunteers. I we could not do care coordination without volunteers. Right, it's right. amazing. And so I often hear people say when, when care coordinators are talking, there's nothing that is uh, not within your purview of what you do, that's correct? Right. That's I mean, right. uh, so, so uh, you've had folks that have been on for a very short period of time and folks that have been a very long period of time. Now let's say, and everything in between, so to speak. Now let's say someone becomes even more frail um, and they have even more uh, concerns. Maybe, you know, maybe they've had uh, uh, just an event, a health event that has happened. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what we call care management and those, those kinds of services that we have? We have, well, certainly home care. If someone needs assistance with bathing or showering or uh, just someone in the home to be near them or even respite for their caregiver, that is a major um, issue for um, care coordination is to address not only the client but their family and their caregivers. Um, and then we have the nursing program that can go out and, and help with more frail individuals in care management. Yeah. So this sounds pretty intensive, so there must be a huge cost to this. No, none <laughs> whatsoever. There's there, no there is uh, charges affiliated with some of the home care that we right. uh, put, put together for them, but Correct. that's always disclosed from the beginning. It disclosed, and it's, it's uh, income-based, yes. that kind of a thing. And so, so you know, a as you know, uh, if you live in Midland County, you, there's a millage, uh, and it's about 60% of our our expenses are paid by millage, but we're also a great partner with United Way. Uh, and we also have other partnerships with all sorts of people. Uh, one is uh, a partnership with um, Family and Children's Services mm -hmm. in regard to counseling. So talk to us how an older adult might access counseling through senior services uh, and Family and Children's Services. Mm -hmm. So that would be uh, our socialization piece with um, support groups and counseling and uh, friendly visitors. We have volunteers that will 
we'll go out and spend a few hours every month with uh, with an individual and build a, a beautiful relationship so that's kind of the community helping in the community um, I'll give an example sure. I had a um, client well she wasn't a client yet uh, it was a it was a call from an individual and um, she was just wanting counseling so during the intake I realized that she's completely isolated she endured significant tragic losses in the in recently and um, she had had weight loss she wasn't eating she wasn't leaving the house and so I offered care coordination and she accepted and um, so the um, Meals on Wheels and counseling were in place for a year and I had a conversation with her a year later and she said I don't need help anymore she said you all just those two simple services of the nutrition, the, the Meals on Wheels, seeing a volunteer come to my door every day was some of the only social contact that she had. And, uh, and then the counseling, and she said, um, you've saved my life, and I'm ready to live again. So that's, that's the awesome. power of counseling and Meals on Wheels. And Meals on Wheels, mm -hmm. and not being so lonely. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, so that's fantastic. Um, what would you say to someone, you know, one of the, one of the problems that, that I hear about when I speak, you know, when people find out, and I, I'm sure we all experience this, I know we all experience this, people find out you're with the Council on Aging or Senior Services. Oh my gosh, they talk about, you know, my, you know I really wish I could get my, my dad to do this or my grandpa or my grandma or whatever. I just, ah, you know, they get very frustrated. What would you say to someone who is hesitant about reaching out to us for help? Uh, we have experience with all kinds of uh, reluctancy, let me say that. Um, and so we will start as slowly or as quickly as someone is comfortable with. We, we just present what we have. And um, I have an example of a home visit. I had a gentleman who was very reluctant to allow us into his home for the home visit, which is required to start our services. And um, we, we went in and everything took place. And a year later, he we were talking more frankly because we really do build relationships with these people. And he said, you know, Julie, I thought you were coming to my home to criticize and judge and correct things and make them the way you wanted it. And, uh, and he said, I realized you were just coming to uh, use what I already have and make it work the best that we could and build on that. So that was wonderful to hear because that is our goal. Absolutely. And there are several of us that do that. You know, there are what, four, Fourteen? I sh should know that off the top of my head. How many care coordinators are there? Seven. Seven. We need fourteen. They need fourteen. <laughs> I just really fell into that, and Barb is going to hear that. I said seven, Barb. I didn't say fourteen. Barb is her supervisor. Uh, so anyway, there's seven of us, but they do the work of fourteen people, uh, obviously. Uh, and, and so we we just we work really hard. At, at making connections with people. And we did that during the pandemic. And again, I'm talking about when, when everything was shut down, when we were shut down, mm -hmm. we didn't stop doing this. Mm -hmm. You folks were on the phone all the time. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the other thing that we did uh, during that time was we created this basically a phone bank. So we were also calling the people that usually went to the centers. We couldn't call you if we didn't know you were out there. If you call us and, or get on our website, we'll know you're out there. But we would call them. Let, talk, to, talk to me about uh, the th different things that you did during the, um, the pandemic period where everything was closed down. Well, it was awful because, um, you know, a relationship involves being with someone. So uh, it was difficult, but we became very good at it. Um, we adjusted. And in fact, the whole um, agency, to some extent, made telephone calls. Um, and. I still hear from some of my coworkers who aren't care coordinators will miss the person that they would call once a week or once a month. Yeah. So we really did reach out and it was a it was a different level. It wasn't what we we're used to, but senior services adjusts yes. and is flexible and that's a great part of our service. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So as as folks become um, even more frail and you know, uh, everybody 
knows about you know the devastating effects that happen with family members in terms of dementia and Alzheimer's or stroke or Parkinson's those kinds of things uh, and so we also have a program we have a, 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 a wonderful building uh, that we have and it's called the Seasons Adult Day Services uh, and Deb is in charge of Seasons Adult Day Services also transportation and we're going to talk a little bit here in a after you speak about senior services about transportation because I think that's really important as well one of the services that we do but talk to us about um, seasons adult day services and what we can provide and just yeah. what it looks like those kinds of things right uh, so for the folks that that don't know the seasons adult day health services building is actually located um, directly across the street of Saginaw Road from the senior services building and um, it is a center, it is a very beautiful, home-like, warm and inviting center um, for folks that are living with um, uh, chronic, we say age-related um, diseases such as, like you mentioned, Parkinson's disease, maybe Huntington's disease, um, maybe cancer, maybe they've had a stroke. Those, those types of age-related um, diseases do impact people's uh, physical, there's um, uh, cognitive changes that impact um, um, their mobility perhaps. It's also a program for individuals that are living with changes um, that they've noticed in their memory um, that maybe is starting to impact a little bit of their daily life. And then also primarily it is a program very specific to um, individuals that are living with uh, dementias, various different types of dementias. And there's a number of different dementias. Uh, the most, most common is, is Alzheimer's disease, but there's uh, um, uh, frontal temporal dementia, there's vascular dementia from folks that are having maybe um, uh, some like mini strokes, TIAs, what they're called. But those, those, those conditions, whether it's age-related chronic conditions or um, more advanced um, dementia-related uh, conditions that impact um, memory, thinking, judgment, reasoning, um, uh, communication, many times it, it, it changes emotions, changes personalities, and those types of things um, um, are very common in, in the world, but uh, become much more challenging for the individual themselves that's living with it, uh, and, and very um, um, difficult for, for the families. And, you know, as I'm listening to, to all of our coworkers and stuff, so many of the programs that, uh, that we provide, uh, whether it's for active seniors, active adults, or you know, uh, who are needing maybe nutrition, or, or pretty difficult situations that you've encountered and stuff, we are also collaboratively, all of us, and all of our services working with many of the same individuals and, and the same families to provide that support. So Seasons basically uh, uh, is, a, is more of a structured program that when you walk into that, um, uh, into that building, it just feels vibrant, but it feels warm. It just has a good feel to it. And uh, the, the, the program is set up to where there are structured activities that are different in nature uh, that tap into a variety of things, whether it's brain training, cognitive types of things, physical exercise, music, dancing, laughter, um, pet therapy, there's paint classes, cooking classes, there's a variety of things that are all designed, but it's designed for the individual and who they are, who they've been, what are their interests, and even if they're not able to perform some of these things at the level, uh, we are able to modify and help folks succeed and, and regain that independence that they've always had, so, yeah. It really is something you, you, you need to see, and, yeah. and, and it's affordable, correct? I mean, Very you know, talk to us about, sure. you know, the cost structure a little bit. Okay, uh, sure. before so uh, what, when, we, when we first, we get a variety of referrals. Many come from the care coordination, uh, Trina's group uh, refer. When we're talking initially with families, first we'll gain, you know, tell us a little bit about your situation and, you know, we meet the person. When it gets to the point of uh, their interest in possibly, you know, looking a little bit further into this, after a couple free trial days, just come, just come in and just let's give it a try, then we eventually enroll. 
uh, I'll talk with them and our staff will talk with them to see if they're, uh, when cost comes up, do they have possibly a long-term care insurance policy? Uh, many like John Hancock or some of those insurances do have an adult day type of benefit. Uh, the Veterans Administration for individuals that uh, maybe uh, have, have served uh, active service, they're enrolled with the VA. Uh, we have a number of, of folks that are, are fully funded with through the VA. There's another program called the Medicaid Waiver Program that has funding available, and there's some eligibility criteria for that. Uh, but then uh, our private pay, there is a private pay rate. We have a two-hour rate, $25, a, a four-hour rate up to 55, and then there's a full-day rate, anything over four hours. Uh, but one thing that uh, uh, occasionally we will uh, run across with families is, is you know, that they, they may have limited means to be able to pay for that. And we absolutely will not turn anyone away from a program like this regardless, based on their ability to pay or not. Mm -hmm. So we are in Midland, we do have millage, and we're extremely fortunate to have uh, some other funding sources, like through our Area Agency on Aging, that's able to uh, help with scholarships and help with funding for individuals that may need some uh, assistance with that. We want the Seasons Program to be the right fit for them uh, in every way and take the financial aspect of it out of, out of the equation completely. Yeah. And, it's a, and it's a great intermediate step, yeah. intermediate step yeah. uh, to, you know, uh, full, full assisted living and those kinds of things. And I yeah. think it's one of, one of Midland County's um, yeah. best kept secrets. We, there just are more people that could really benefit because part of the problem, we talked about caregiver support and those kinds of things. Part of the problem with folks who are um, uh, caring for a loved one who has some of the things that you spoke about mm -hmm. uh, is it, it wears on them and now two people are going uh, in the wrong direction right you know and so so we really want to help the caregiver uh, and that's what seasons is not only designed to help the person who is being cared for yeah. but also help the caregiver right. so we talked about all these different programs uh, and we talked about how, you know, even seasons and, yeah. and you know, there are, there's a whole other aspect of what we do. And, of course, we haven't talked about a lot of what we do, frankly. But one of them is transportation. Mm -hmm. Because, for instance, folks, you know, they may need, y you know, to get di to dialysis. And they have no other way to do it. Uh, they might need to get, you know, to chemotherapy. Um, and, and when we really have enough volunteers, and they might need a hair hairdresser, mm -hmm. which is really important. Uh, but right, you know, right now that's that, that's a tougher one to do. But um, uh, so we have transportation, and uh, uh, we we we're door to door service. So talk to us about transportation and how it helps connect the things that we've talked about, but also um, yeah. partners with with a hospital and other places. Oh my, yes, mm -hmm. uh, transportation is absolutely a core service. It is the lifeline for, I mean, if you think of all of us, we're able to just easily get in our car and go to the store and go shopping and do those things. And when you are missing that one piece, whether you have vision loss or, or changes in mobility, and you, that is no longer an option for you, it, it can be extremely devastating. And um, having this service for older adults has, has, has been a lifeline. It, it, and many times they have said, it is the one thing that has allowed them to, to stay independent. They're able to schedule their own appointments. They're able to schedule in their day and uh, feel a sense of, of pride with, with that. Um, the, the, the program is, is run out of, out of the Senior Services Building. We have a full-time um, manager and a scheduler that uh, take calls all day long and work directly with the volunteers. So if any, um, any individual, age 16 and older, that needs a ride anywhere, it doesn't just have to be, you know, we're primarily doing medical appointments, dialysis, PT, labs. We have a lot that are coming to seasons. Uh, but we also have some that are going uh, that, that really benefit from the socialization at the activity center and, uh, but have no way to get there. But simply getting that ride to the activity center um, has been life-changing for them. Uh, just give us the, the destination, your appointment time, how long you think you're going to be there, uh, and, and then they take care of it. So our volunteer drivers, we, um, uh, we're always in need of drivers, but we've got this incredible team of drivers that 
just do this. Mm -hmm. Some are working, driving half days, some are driving full days, and uh, they have just developed relationships with these folks. Um, uh, great conversation in the vehicles, and uh, it's just a very affordable service, but a very, very necessary service as well, so, yeah. yeah. And, and, and so one of the things that we have found in regard to uh, not only Meals on Wheels drivers, but transportation drivers, e and, and even I would even say Team Handyman, and we'll talk about volunteers here in a second, is that they figuratively are saving lives, yes. okay, because, you know, they're, they're keeping them connected to the world. They're the check, they're the check on, on folks. For instance, I remember when I first came on board a couple years ago, three, well, four years ago now, it was really cold. It was incredibly cold. So the TV station came out to find out what are you doing differently uh, because of this extreme cold for older adults. And I went, uh, nothing. We're not doing anything differently. What do you mean? We check on them every day. That's what we do. Yeah. That's what we do. We always have food for them, and we're going to check on them every day. And so we don't, th that is what Meals on Wheels can do. That is what transportation can do. Team Handyman can do all those kinds of things. So we have an extreme need for volunteers. Mm -hmm. So Trina, would you talk to us a little bit about volunteers? Well, volunteers are in so many ways the lifeblood of this agency. We could not perform a fraction of the services that we do without these incredible incredible, dedicated, caring people who give their time to make it possible. And, and I'm talking about a lot of people. Um, we're talking a good four to 500 people a year are dedicating their time to volunteer. And some of them are coming every day. Some of them volunteer for different services. They might volunteer for Meals on Wheels and Handyman and transportation. Like they, uh, and, and I think one of the things that makes it such a powerful volunteer experience is, as you alluded to earlier, how amazing the clients are um, and how, how fascinating they are, how interesting it is to get to talk to them, and how much of a reward it is for the person who's doing it. You know, it, as you sh move through your life, you know, a lot of our volunteers are themselves older adults. And sometimes in our earlier life, we were getting our meaning from our work or from raising our children. And I think as you get into, into retirement, a volunteer service like these, like Meals on Wheels, like transportation, team handyman, friendly visitors, friendly shoppers, um, this can become your way to give back and it can become um, really your meaning in life. And uh, sometimes we, we almost have to get volunteers to, like, we need to give some spots to some other people <laughs> so that we're not in a big hole if something happens to you. Um, because they, they just get so much out of it themselves. Um, but they're also at the same time giving so much life-saving service, literally sometimes life-saving service. You know, we've had people literally their lives were saved because of the smoke alarms we put in or the CO detectors. Um, uh, the, you know, and we have volunteers that are in seasons too. And I can't tell you how many caregivers have told me, seasons saved my life. Mm -hmm. It saved my life. I couldn't have done it. I couldn't have done it. And, um, and part of that is the amazing staff, but part of it is also those volunteers coming in and um, really engaging with people and helping them keep engaging with their life people going into people's homes, um, just visiting them, you know, just just spending some time and, uh, and doing their shopping for them. That daily check with Meals on Wheels, are you okay? Eyes, eyes on them every single day. And that, uh, it's so rewarding when you see the surveys come back and how many of them are saying, you know, the volunteers are amazing. Yeah. We have a huge thing going on right now. Uh, for those of you who, who have had to uh, ever uh, navigate Medicare, okay, or Medica Medicare Advantage, uh, you, um, you, know, you should be calling us as well. Uh, we have 
incredible volunteers. But so, so you know, there's the driving and there's the handyman. We can find any skill that you might have. Yeah. We can find a way for you to volunteer uh, in all of these areas. But our volunteers that are doing the Medicare Advantage right now and Medi Medicare uh, open enrollment, I'm telling you, don't fight it. Call us and, and we can help. So it's just an amazing thing. I didn't know if there was anything else anyone wanted to mention that it just feels, I mean, there's, there, uh, we've, we've only really, believe it or not, we've been talking for however long we've been talking, but we've only scratched the service, surface here. Um, and what do they say? It ain't bragging if that's what you do, right? And, and so I would suggest that that's, that's, not, that's not it. But you can find out so much more about us. Uh, you really can. Um, and what we would like you to do is to, you know, stop by any time or call us or uh, visit us at uh, uh, seniorservices.org. Uh, this w is Midland, then. Sir, thank you. See, Senior Services Midland. That's why we have um, <laughs> Trina around is to, and I, you know, see, if you notice, no one said, Charlie, what do you do? Okay, because <laughs> I don't do anything. Um, but seniorservicesmidland.org. And not uh, Midland, Texas. In not <laughs> Midland, Texas, although we love it when we get donations from Midland, Texas. <laughs> um, uh, but we, we generally tell them after, after a while, we tell them, no, nah, that's, that's not us. Uh, um, so anyhow, uh, we would love for you to visit us, call us, uh, don't be hesitant. We want the first thing you think about when you um, are, are turning 60, uh, we want the first thing you think about when you need some help with with an older adult in your life uh, We want you to we want us to be the first thing you think about uh, And so mainly what we want you to do is embrace your age. So thank you so much for joining us We look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day